Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. And today I'm going to go over my top 5 tips for leveling a new captain inside of the game. So first off, for my first point, I'm going to talk about character selection. Now there are three different factions inside the game, although the starting screen for choosing a character doesn't really show that very well. Um, the three factions are Federation, Klingon Empire, and Romulan Republic. For these three factions, I'm considering them different factions um, if their selection of starships are, di are disparately different between them. So in terms of Federation, we have your three different star fleets, as well as the, um, your Dominion-aligned Federation. Dominion can decide between Klingon and Federation, and they're basically, they start at level 60. But otherwise, they're literally just Federation or Klingon Defense Force. The Roman Republic is unique because they get most of their other allied ships, plus they have a lot more unique ships inside the game too. Overall, in terms of professions, there's science, tactical, and engineering. Engineering actually is honestly one of the most difficult professions inside the game. So if, if you're a new player starting the game, I would not go with engineering. I would instead actually go with science, and I would go with the alien faction or alien species, simply because um, aliens and science um, both combined have the most versatility in the, in the entire game. And I would suggest just going with a Discovery Captain if this is your first time playing the game, simply because that has the best tutorial in the game at, at the moment. And some of, some, of the some of the best cinematics and things in, in the game. And if you don't like the cinematics there, then, well, if there's anything else in the game that really is going to be much better. Um, all right, my second point is difficulty. And... Um, there are, there are three different difficulty settings kind of inside the game. There is the difficulty settings for task force op operations, which you can literally just choose the skill from from normal to elite um, in the actual skill of, of the mission that you're choosing. Or you can just choose a normal or advanced um, for, for random task force op operations. There's difficulty um, depending upon your team leader. If you're in a group of, of, of other human people, it's whatever difficulty setting for the team leader is what the difficulty for the missions are going to be. If you're by yourself, though, it is by whatever your default mission setting is in your missions menu. Uh, there, there, there was um, um, a question last week about that, so I'll show you simply how to get there. Now, this is just going to be on PC. I, I don't play on Xbox or PS4, so I, I can't really give you advice there. However, um, if, if you push the um, missions button, um, you'll, you'll have, have this pop up here. If you go to the In Progress tab, and then go to the very bottom, you'll be able to see what your current difficulty setting is for your character. And if you click on that, you'll be able to choose between normal, advanced, or elite. Uh, unless you're in like a dedicated group of five leveling together, I would highly recommend choosing the normal difficulty setting um, to, to, go th to go through the missions. I personally choose advanced when I'm doing it because I know what I'm doing in, in, in the game, and I wanna still give myself a, a challenge getting through all of the missions in the game. Don't use Elite unless you have Mark 15 Epic for basically everything on your ship whenever you're going through missions. Just saying. So for point three, I'm going to go over, over bridge officers for both space and ground in terms of some basic um, traits to look out for as well as some basic abilities to think about. Uh, whenever you're leveling, I highly recommend um, getting the team abilities, engineering, science, and tactical team. Um, for e e for each, each one of them, at least one um, for um, for all of your bridge offer seats. I mentioned for engineering, get reverse shield polarity. It's very strong for whenever you're in, in a pinch. Science team is pretty good for healing. And then tactical team is very good for um, for keeping your shield phasings up um, on the size where you're, you're getting damage. Beam fire will is a very push and forget um, um, attack ability, especially because beams are the easiest weapons to use with, with, with the white as firing arcs so that if their enemies are within 10 kilometers of you, they're going to get hit. Um, for, for these abilities and other ones that I'll show in, in this video, you'll be able to get them through any of the officer trainers um, inside the game. For Federation, they're on Earth Space Dock on the eastern side of the map, right below Adm Admiral Quinn's office. Here's a little screenshot of that there. It's this bridge officer right here. Or, sorry, this person right here. For the Clan on Empire, um, the, the person is located on, on Kronos First City. Uh, if you go to the northeast corner of, of the map to the barracks area, which is if you get lost, there are some signs to get you there. 
um, right when you go down this ramp here, you'll be able to get to the officer right here. For the Ron Romney Republic, you're able to go to either the Federation or the Space Sock or Klingon Kronos for City if when the ones you've allied with a faction. Um, or you can go to New Romulus Command at New Romulus and go to the northeast corner of, of the map to this guy right here. Uh, well, when it comes to ground abilities, um, first off, for your, your bridge officers themselves, I would highly recommend having one tactical officer, one engineering officer, and two science officers. When, when it comes to bridge officer AI in, inside of the game, um, they are really stupid when it comes to using their weapons. Uh, they're more prone to use, using their abilities their, um, themselves a lot more, which means that your tactical bridge officers are going to be a lot weaker than they would be uh, otherwise. Um, humans, you, well, real people you using tactical uh, as their profession will be very strong in ground combat, but the AI ones are, are really dumb. So that's why I only have one tactical. Um, inside of ground combat. And typically for these, um, I, I have a description for what they basically do. I have my tactical officer, we, we, what he's supposed to be doing is just distracting slash buffing my own team. That's also a draw fire and suppressing fire is kind of like four along with battle strategies and overwatch to kind of buff my team. Um, my engineering bridge officer is there for, for constructs, a shield recharge to heal our shields a little bit, along with a beam turret and quantum mortar to help um, defeat um, enemies that are in really tough spots and then a medical generator to help heal us. And then I have two science officers. Science is extremely versatile on the ground, so this is not an issue at all. I have one that's kind of a dedicated healer with metal tricorder, faster generator, and then I help monitor to help with healing, plus a high hypo spray to help deal with, with debuffs that are going to the team. And then my non-healer guy who does a lot of crowd control things to debuff the enemy. When it comes to space trace themselves or for bridge officers, um, for space, these are, these are the ones that you should be looking for. Um, the survival one is called Leadership. Um, this is available on, on human bridge officers, which um, which the Federation and Federation Line Romans are able to get very easily, as well as the Lucari and Kentari bridge officers off of the fleet colony. You have to get tier 4 or tier, tier 5 morale in order to get those bridge officers, but um, the Lucari ones are exceptionally good as well. When it comes to DPS, um, these are the ones you should be looking for. Romulan operatives are extremely strong for their increase the crit chance of crit severity, which is what you're really looking for. The space version of Engineered Soldier, available from the Geminar Big Pack, the really expensive one. It, it'll give you a tactical science and engineering version of a Geminar bridge officer that's that has this tray for space that gives you a pretty close to comparable amount for a Romulan operative, but for space and slightly less crit chance for a little bit of damage. Photographic memory is off of Cardassian bridge officers and is pretty good, as well as Pirate, which is good, um, and, and it's on Nausicaan bridge officers for the Klingon Empire. For, for ground traits, um, what you're looking for for bridge officers that are going to be for ground combat are our captain or bridge officers that have four ground traits. Um, so, so a lot, a lot of your starter bridge officers are not going to be very or as good as they optimally could be in ground combat, because having four ground traits is going to be really good. Um, your idea, ideally, you're looking for bridge officers that have creative or superior creativity as one of their ground traits, because that's the best one in the entire game. Alongside that, having um, Android and Voth bridge officers that have a self res ability is also pretty nice in case there's stuff that one shots them. You don't have to try to bring them back to life, they immediately come back. And, and alongside that, having stuff with health and health regen is what I personally kind of try, try to veer towards. So, uh, so other people will try to say otherwise, but especially for leveling, health and health regen along with creativity are very, very strong for your ground bridge officers. Um, fourth point is mission rewards and upgrading. Um, typically, until you get into the super end game, you're not gonna really worry about up upgrading your gear because your levels and the gear that you're able to get keeps on changing so often. The one thing that I didn't realize though, and was pointed out to me just a couple days ago, is that just about all the missions in the game now, um, their mission reward items have free upgrades to Mark 11 or Mark 12, depending upon the item and the mission. I didn't realize that, but that is and it's super awesome that that change has gone into effect. And when I started the game, that wasn't always the case. Um, it was mainly the featured episodes that had that, and I was for very limited times before it went back to a uh, level paywall. 
but that level level um, um, brick wall is no longer existing inside the game for missions. You just have to get a couple of those ancillary missions leading up to those missions, and you're able to play literally any mission in the game now, which is pretty nice. So this is how you um, deal with, with, with upgrading. So what you do is you'll find the item that you want. You'll right-click on it and go to up, Upgrade Item, and you'll have this uh, menu up, up here. here. Um, if, it's a, if it's one that has that free upgrade up to it, you'll already have this ready to upgrade thing right here. Otherwise, you'll you'll have to select like to put in like tech upgrades along with the lithium for most of them to have a for to have the item to be upgraded a little bit easier. From there, you click the upgrade item, and then you you get the upgrade successful here, and potentially you might have it go up up and rarity as well as a mark. From there, you click claim item, and then you're able to continue on for however long you want to go. If you get to Mark 15 Epic, then it'll, it'll tell you that it's a maximum upgrade and it won't let you put in any more tech upgrades here. Otherwise, it'll say you can you can, can continue on. Um, so the last point here is combat basics when leveling. So these are just some super basic ones. In ground combat, more often than not, if you just always aim and always crouch, it's going to be the best option overall because it'll give you the most protection as well as give you the most DPS whenever you're trying to take out enemies inside the game. Alongside that, in space combat, remember that if, if you're not within 10 kilometers of, of, of an enemy, you cannot you cannot attack them, but they also cannot attack you. Additionally, um, spam an ability called Distribute Shield Power. It is an ability that's not typically in your power bar, but it's one that whenever you're leveling up, you probably should be putting there. And if you're going to be a tank at the high end, it's also something you should also be considering to use as well. Um, now, when it comes to like putting abilities in your power bar, it depends upon your hotkeys and stuff as to what that actually is. I'm just showing you very quickly how to get to keybinds to see what um, that actually happens to be for your captain. But once you've figured out what um, your hotkey is for your, your trade powers, for me, I still have the default P button um, on PC. Um, you're able just to push out that hotkey and get all of your skills available that, that will show up here. And this is this is this is ordered in an alphabetical order, and that's all the abilities from your bridge officers, from your profession, from your specializations, from from any special traits that give you powers, as well as any set bonuses and consoles that give you more powers. From, from here, you're able to just to scroll down to whatever thing you have. What we're concerned about for this video is Distribute Shield Power, which is really strong at low levels. And then you can easily just slot that right into one of your um, power bar slots. Then you literally just be constantly spamming this when you aren't using any other abilities. Then, of course, you can also lock the tray so that abilities don't actually get dragged out of there whenever you're in combat. In case you're one of those people that, like, like I was when I started the game, that I accidentally like dragged out a lot of my abilities when I was trying to use stuff in, in the game. But anyway, um, that's my nice short video about a couple of good tips to think about. Um, feel free to like and subscribe if you like this type of content. I typically have some, some sort of build video on Thursdays, um, and I typically have something more thoughtful to talk about on, on Sundays. But yeah, that's basically it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.